Welcome. I'm Mayor Gary Sells, and with me today is Paul Simon, lead of our Planning and Development Services Department within the City of Revelstoke. Today we're talking about the draft official community plan, which will be coming to Council on June 14th for first and second readings. Paul, can you tell our audience what initiated the new OCP process and how did we get to where we're at with it today? Certainly. So our OCP was adopted in 2009. Good practice is looking at reviews, substantial reviews of your OCP every 10 years. We're at about 13 years right now, right. so it's a bit overdue. Um, there's been several amendments to the plan over those 13 years, and when you start making substantial amendments, it opens up room for contradictions and challenges with interpretation, which we're facing on a day-to-day -day basis in the planning group, and the community is seeing that too, I think. And then lastly, the needs of the community have changed dramatically over the last 13 years. Revelstoke is a different place today than it was in 2009, and even in my short time here, the last few years, I've seen substantial changes in things like housing. So we need a document that's gonna be forward-thinking to address the needs of community residents today. And how we ultimately got to this point is a process to develop the OCP that's well vetted in robust public engagement. So all the way back in 2019, council authorized staff to start the vision check-in process. So vision check-in, establishment of community priorities, substantial involvement from the community to get to that point. Um, checks and balances along the way with the community as well, looking at information on how we frame the OCP, the main goals that will guide subsequent policies, uh, looking at growth scenarios, presenting those to the community, and then finally presenting the draft plan. And all along the way, we've had the support of the OCP focus group, which comprised 22 members of the community representing a diversity of organizations that had helped provide insight on the process and how to best inform the community and make sure that all views were represented. Um, one of the things that they requested and recommended of staff was to do policy teams. So to actually draft the policies in the OCP, we had 33 community members form different policy teams to provide insight. And what the end result was is 1,100 hours of dedicated volunteer hours from the community to directly um, provide input in what this plan needs to entail. So it's really well vetted with community engagement. And I, you know, I'm really proud of you guys getting to that point because those 33 community members went out to their groups and their associates and their friends and we're able to come back with actual uh, thoughts from yeah. community members. And so those community groups or members have, have taken ownership of the OCP, and that's exactly what we wanted. So I'm really appreciative of that fact because it's coming from the community. It's their living document. A lot of capacity and local knowledge in this community. That's very, great. very impressed. Yeah, it's great, great. So what would you like to highlight about the draft OCP for our audience? Yeah. So a few things that are key. So housing, no secret within the city, we right. have challenges with housing. We have what planners refer to as the missing middle. You know, so that diversity of housing, apartments, mixed use buildings, row houses, ground oriented development like duplexes, things of that nature. So there's a really robust housing target of 75% of new development to be that multifamily style development. Now, even if we achieve that over the next 20 years, 75% seems like a big number, right. Revelstoke will still be predominantly a single family community. Um, one of the other items is climate change action. So we have a robust greenhouse gas emission reduction target. Uh, we are looking at 40% reduction from 2007 levels by 2030 and net zero by 2050. And then lastly, this, this theme of engaging in the process of indigenous reconciliation and developing meaningful partnerships with indigenous communities as we do look to develop into the future. So that's really prevalent in the OCP document. And that's really good because having that conversation with our First Nations partners as to how, you know, how we move forward, where we go, their input is essential to how things get done. So that's great. So and Paul, what's next? for the draft OCP process? So June 14th, initial council consideration, and then we would be targeting, uh, depending on feedback from council, a public hearing in July, and we would encourage everyone to come out to a public hearing to provide their feedback to council so that council can make an informed decision on the document. And that's really what we wanna do, is so for those of you who are uh, wanna give their input, the public hearing is where you do it. So we wanna see you come out. Okay, so Paul, thank you for joining me today to talk about that draft OCP. Thank you to our audience for listening in. I hope our conversation today has been informative and I encourage you to visit Talk Revelstoke to learn more about the OCP process. You can also join the live stream council meeting on June 14th at 3 p.m. 
to hear council discuss this important community issue. Thanks again for listening.